All right, folks, this time I'd like to talk about how to get into historical sword fighting as a hobby or sport or recreation, whatever. Uh, before I even continue saying any more, for this video it will be relevant that you actually read the video description. You know, on many videos people keep asking me where did you get that, even though I actually posted the relevant links in the video description, but apparently a lot of viewers just ignore that. So down there where it says show more, click on that, read the video description, profit. Because I will be posting links that are relevant for this. Uh, so, if you have an interest in historical sword fencing, uh, by the way, fencing, I use that as the broad general term, it's not just the modern stuff with flimsy foils and thin sabers and whatnot, you know, long sword fencing can also be applied. For one, YouTube is a good source because there is plenty of uh, video demonstrations of techniques available out there. Uh, for instance, if you look for uh, longsword techniques, if you just search that, you will find some. And also if you search for the specific names of some of the uh, historical fencing masters. Then you also have a variety of books. This one here is a very good book that I can recommend. The Swordsman's Companion by Guy Windsor. And uh, this is an excellent introduction to the matter. It covers all the basics, the fundamentals of sword fighting, like footwork, and uh, it it builds on the Italian tradition, Fiore in, in particular, uh, has some historical illustrations here, uh, as well as a lot of photos showing the different guards and techniques. A lot about you know how to do certain parries and counters and everything but also just the, the basics how uh, you know how to do the footwork what are the different guards how to grip the sword uh, what kind of safety equipment you'll need which is also something that I'm going to talk about then you have something like this here Sigmund Ring X Knightly Arts of Combat uh, by David Lindholm and Peter Sverd, I suppose, sounds Swedish, so... Uh, you have very good illustrations in here. It's about sword and buckler, as well as uh, fighting and armor, some longsword techniques, and wrestling. Uh, be aware that this book is, you know, half of the book pretty much is wrestling techniques. So if you're not overly interested in that, well, you might have to look for something else. But um, what I like about this is that it is a very clear illustration. It, you know, with all the arrows, it indicates the direction of the movement and everything. So this is very useful. So yeah, YouTube, books. Uh, you can also look up the, the actual historical manuals. There is a website that I'm going to link where you can download a whole bunch of, of manuals. Um, the, the problem with that is you need to know the fundamentals. So you might have to start with a book plus video demonstrations. There are also DVDs, which I, I can also link to, um, showing certain uh, you know, longsword and messer and sword and buckler techniques. Uh, that is very helpful to actually see that in action. I'm also planning to do some technique demonstrations on my channel, so you can stick around for that. And uh, once you have grasped the, the basic fundamentals, then you can also take a look at the historical manuals, because they build on prior knowledge. You can't just look at them and, and go like, oh yeah, that's supposed that's how it's supposed to go, because they don't do this step-by-step -step illustrations. But once you have grasped the fundamentals, you can use them as well. So let me get into the basic equipment. This is definitely something that you will want to get. A, this is actually a fencing mask, which has some additional padding right here, because most uh, modern fencing masks that don't offer any protection for the back of the head. As you can see right here, you just have this piece, but otherwise it's open and you definitely do not want any strikes on the back of the head. That can be pretty dangerous. So you have this here. This is the absolute force 
uh, sparring helmet or fencing helmet or whatever they, they call it. Again, I'm going to link to it. You see, AF absolute force. This is definitely a good one. Very useful. It's uh, it slips on and off very easily. You have pretty good vision. The the only drawback of this with the extra padding is that it gets pretty warm in here, especially when when you're in you know moving all the time. Uh, you know everything heats up, so it it it's not too pleasant. But then again, you can just you know lift it up and you know get a breather every now and then. If you want to train with uh, steel swords, you will have to make sure that it's it's a very stable mesh. There are, there are different ratings for the different types. Usually it's uh, if you go for a three weapon rated uh, fencing mask that also is suitable for saber fencing, you, you're usually fine. So uh, that is I would say the most important piece of equipment even if you're just doing technique drills. You know, not actual sparring but just you know going through the techniques and at slower speed and everything. It's still good to have that. Because sometimes, you know, when, when you're binding with the swords and whatnot, you can slip off and, and you know, if, if the, the blade gets anywhere near your eye, you're in trouble, obviously. So you will definitely want that. Um, hand protection is also very important for many drills. You should have it. And uh, definitely for sparring. Never do sparring without. Because uh, people have gotten broken fingers. In fact, Th this here is the cheap alternative. Those here are lacrosse gloves. And even with those, if you do, uh, you know, full speed sparring with steel swords, you can still end up with broken fingers. So you, you definitely have to be careful depending on what, what, what you're doing. If you want to do full speed, full force steel sword sparring, you basically have to get uh, steel gauntlets or um, there are some specific sparring uh, gauntlets. Uh, well, actually a more mitten style, which usually have, uh, you know, the, the kind of lobster uh, three finger style, or just full mittens. These here work pretty well for uh, use with the synthetic sparring swords that I have. The only problem with lacrosse gloves is they have no protection here and on the inside. I mean, most gloves don't have any protection on the inside, but the fingertips, that's a bit of an issue. If you get a strike on the fingertips, that would still hurt. And like I said, the sides here are also unprotected. Um, as far as maneuverability is concerned, well, they are not too bad, especially once you've broken them in. You can use the thumb here, which on some especially lower quality steel gauntlets or mittens is not the case. Um, so they, they are, you can see they are a bit bulky, that's somewhat cumbersome, but they do work for uh, sparring and for, for technique training. You can actually also use a lighter gloves. Then yeah, what you should definitely consider getting is some kind of groin protector. There's um, for a variety of martial arts, there are several options available. You can just, well, basically look for groin protector. Uh, you can you find a lot of stuff. Then um, protection for the the joints is definitely a good idea. If you, uh, I, I remember actually once in in uh, KFM training, which is actually unarmed martial arts, but still I I actually got a punch right ab above the elbow once and I got an inflammation on the tendon there and that plagued me for several weeks. It's a good idea to get some additional elbow and knee pads. That's always good to have. But um, the, the absolute minimum that you have to have is definitely a fencing mask and gloves. You know, head and, and hand protection. That's the absolute bare minimum that you have to have. Uh, more equipment is definitely good, but you know, you might do without. And let's get to the actual swords. What I'm using is these synthetic sparring swords. Those are made of nylon and uh, these are designed by Rawlings and uh, they are made by the Night Shop. You can either order them uh, from the Night Shop in the UK, again, link, 
and uh, also uh, I got them from Purple Heart Armory in the US. They also have wooden sparring swords and uh, they, they also carry these. Uh, personally, you know, you could go with wooden uh, sparring swords or wasters as they are sometimes called. Uh, Purple Heart Armory has excellent wooden swords but uh, I personally definitely prefer these here. Mainly because the, the, the main drawback of wooden swords is they are stiff. They do not flex. These here do, which is excellent. I mean, a steel sword flexes as well. And the advantage of this is that when you get stabbed, you know, it, it has some give here. It flexes. So with a wooden sword, if you thrust... And, you know, because they, they don't flex, that's can, that can be pretty dangerous. You can get injuries from that. So what about the weight? Well, generally these things are at about two-thirds of the weight of a uh, historical sword, steel sword. Uh, but you can get the steel guard and pommel, and that makes it a lot heavier. So this is actually now fairly close to the authentic weight. The only f difference is that the point of balance is a bit closer towards the hilt simply because the blade doesn't weigh as much as a an actual <clears throat> steel sword would. But um, the, the pommel actually weighs more. So let me see the point of balance is... yeah, it's very close to the <clears throat> to the hilt. Some historical swords are actually have a similar balance so it's not that big of a deal, and um, <clears throat> it's still a bit lighter, but not much. So this is actually a fairly close approximation. Another option that we tried before is uh, a kind of padded sparring sword uh, called Realistic Sparring Swords, RSW, made in Hong Kong. And uh, those are actually weighted to have realistic, pretty much the exact same weight and balance, point of balance that historical swords have, but they are padded with high high impact foam uh, so that you don't need as much safety equipment even though you still need protective gear for, for your head you still need defensive mask um, but the problem with those is that they they don't bind realistically if you have a foam sword you know they, they hit each other they, they will stick basically and they also bounce to some extent which I mean, those here, they hardly bounce at all. And with the, the synthetic ones here, there are a lot of techniques where you actually, you know, slide up and down the, uh, the sword, your opponent's sword blade. And this works very well with these. With the, sparring, uh, with the padded sparring swords, no, the padding just doesn't allow for that, it just sticks. And uh, so these handle more realistically. Of course, they also have their drawbacks, uh, uh, you know, compared to steel. Like, for example, they slide too much when it comes to the edges here. If you want to get um, steel, blunt steel swords, you obviously need a lot more safety equipment. And also they cost more. These here, you can get them for as little as, I think it was... Six, no, seventy dollars, approximately. Uh, whereas for a good steel tr sparring sword, you have to spend at least around three hundred dollars. If you want something really good that is uh, very historically accurate and handles well and is very well built, you're more in the range of four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, even more, depending on where you get it from. Um, so this is definitely the cheaper alternative, but it is of course sparring with uh, with steel swords is of course a bit more realistic. You know, ideally if you want full realism you have to go with sharp swords, but please don't do that. I, I'm not advocating that in any way, shape or form. If maybe if you have advanced very far and you've become extremely proficient with swords and you set up some kind of insurance beforehand maybe then you could try something like that but 
no, please, otherwise don't. So yeah, so much for the introduction. I might actually do a more in-depth review of these if there is interest. Otherwise, I hope this has helped. Again, links in the description. So yeah, thanks for watching and happy fighting.